Hey everyone, welcome to our channel where we help your real estate investments work harder for you. I'm Samantha from Elevate Realty in Toronto. Today we're doing something really special. The founder and managing partner of Elevate, Simon Law, invited me to come see his latest investment property in Toronto. He told me that this is a very special project and I got to check it out. So here I am. Let's go meet him. Wow, this is a massive property. I've seen it in pictures, but it's really big in real life. So, you know, I haven't left my house in the past three months because of the lockdown and this is the first place I'm coming to on reopening. So tell me more about this new investment project that you've been working on. Thanks, Sam. Uh, it's uh, it's really quite an exciting project. Um, I've been working on this for the last two months. Um, this project, this opportunity came up um, as a result of a relationship that I had with a previous agent I had worked on on a previous transaction. Um, he mentioned that he had a property that he was trying to sell, that wouldn't be able to, wasn't selling on the market. Uh, we had a conversation about it and, uh, you know, it took a lot of back and forth uh, discussion around how to make it work, but ultimately we found a way to make it work. And so we purchased this building uh, with, you know, substantially lower rents and it needed a lot of renovation. And, and uh, really the last couple months has been bringing it on uh, back on board. And with COVID, it's been uh, very quiet. So I've had a lot of time to focus on it. And normally we wouldn't have time to do these type of videos, but in this particular occasion, we can actually show you the property post renovations. So that sounds pretty awesome. But you know what? I haven't seen you in the past few months, so I don't really know much about this place. I actually looked it up on MLS and I couldn't find it. So how did you actually get it? Yeah, like I said a little earlier, um, I had a previous relationship with an agent and it worked out really well where um, he originally had actually listed on MLS. It didn't sell uh, for a number of reasons. I won't go into the specifics here, uh, but we, we then subsequently had a conversation and we worked out a lot of details. There were a lot of open issues that were, hadn't been addressed in this property because the previous owner had owned it for 50 years. Um, and so a lot of issues had just been piling up and they really didn't know how to solve them and, and to ultimately make a, a buyer a purchase are comfortable with with taking over the units so um, so it took some time took a lot of negotiation and it was a great relationship that I had with this agent that that allowed us to kind of further that negotiation and work together to bring this deal together and make it uh, make it something we could work on I know you're always up for a challenge and you always like to lead by example and take on interesting projects for us to learn more about so can you tell me what the major challenges you encountered on this project are um, well, I think the biggest challenge was when we bought this building, it wasn't going to pay for itself. Um, the rents were very low, uh, um, substantially lower than where we're, where we're going to have them today. And, and the challenge was to figure out how to bring the, you know, in the real estate industry, we call it the highest and best rents, uh, highest and best um, use for the property. Um, and so that really was the challenge from day one, how to, how to sort of work with um, the tenant profile that was living in the building to, to drive that ultimately uh, through doing various upgrades to having conversations with the tenants and so forth. And, and that's really the work that, that, that's been put in on the property to bring it to where it is today. Wow, that, I mean, that doesn't sound easy, but I know you probably got a big bump in rents after that. So how long did that process take? Um, well, so I mentioned that the, the deal was a private deal and it was a deal that I've known the previous agent uh, from a previous transaction that I worked with them. Um, in total, with the negotiation as well as the renovations, this was five months from, from the initial offer to, to now where it's more or less completed and ready to be rented at this stage. Okay. All right, so can you tell me a little bit more about the renovations? Um, what kind of things did you do to this project to upgrade it and then manage to rent it out afterwards? Um, yeah, did you want me to go into the property itself? And yeah, yeah, I would love to yeah. see a tour. Thanks for yeah. inviting me. <laughs> so why don't we, been outside for yeah, why don't we go inside and we'll take a look. All right, come on in. So this is the first unit. This is the main floor unit in, uh, of this building. So I should start by giving you a little bit of background about this uh, this building. This uh, building has uh, five units. So this is the four bedroom unit that we're in today, uh, right now. Um, there are three additional one bedroom units around the, on the two, uh, two of them on the second floor and one in the basement and a, and a bachelor suite as well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just show you the, the different spaces, give you a very high level overview of some of the work that we've done and, um, and, then, and, then, and then talk through some of the numbers. So first thing you'll notice here, updated the, uh, the basic updates. We repainted the walls, we added uh, pot lights in the ceiling. And uh, what you'll see is that we've updated the windows throughout the, the entire house. Essentially, with pot lights, with paint, and with the, with the updated lighting, this is 90% of what people see. 
The only thing that we haven't updated is the flooring here because we felt that it was sufficient for what, uh, what, our, what our tenants uh, are looking for. The, you'll see um, the first room here, again, just a simple washroom that we've, we've really put together. It's all nice and bright, it's clean, it's updated. Um, nothing beyond what I would call a rental grade in terms of finishing, um, but all nice and clean and very bright. Easy for, easy, for, easy for cleaning. This is the first of four bedrooms, and I'm gonna just uh, give you an idea. Like Each one of the bedrooms has the exact same update, more or less. Updated windows, a new light fixture, uh, fully repainted, um, and, um, and, and that's it. They're all quite a good size in this building. Every single one of the bedrooms are about 11 by 12 feet approximately at a minimum. Most of them do have a closet as well. So if you come along, I'll just do a quick, uh, I'll give you a quick snapshot of the couple other uh, bedrooms here. This is, uh, again, the four bedroom units. So the second bedroom is to your right, and the uh, third bedroom is to your left over here. And what you have right next to the third bedroom is this uh, washroom. And this actually, this washroom didn't exist prior to our renovations. We just felt that with a four bedroom, you needed to have an additional washroom. Um, you know, you don't want to fight in the morning and have to fight for the, own, the single washroom in the, in the unit. So we did put in a second washroom. What we lost out in this particular instance is that there were closets on either side. So this bedroom doesn't have a closet. But if you can tell by the space, this is a very large bedroom. And we can put a floating closet here somewhere just to make the space uh, usable for a tenant ultimately. So just walking around, you've seen all the bedrooms. Now just uh, the last thing over here is the kitchen. So if you come over here through, you have the kitchen and dining space. Um, this has been fully updated as well. As you can tell, there's industrial sink here. We've put in a quartz countertop with the laminate uh, cabinets. All the, all the appliances are stainless steel and the pot lights have been added in as well to add for some extra brightness. So it's a, it's a very bright, very you know, simple renovation from a rental grade perspective. This is exactly what we'd be looking for for similar units. So this really concludes our four bedroom space. And what I'll do is I'll give you another tour of one of the one bedroom spaces and, uh, and we'll take it from there. All right, so come on in. So this is the one of the three one bedroom suites here. Um, so just, you know, you've come into the living room. Again, simple. Just to upgrade some pot lights, obviously we're still missing a cover there, but we'll have that installed very shortly. Um, so this is the living room space for this one bedroom. If you follow me here, you'll see the one bedroom um, itself, the single bedroom. Uh, so just turn here. So yeah, so it's again, very good sized bedroom space um, in terms of the way that uh, it's uh, set up a big window, but not a lot of light coming in necessarily. Uh, but a lot of a lot of at least fresh air if you need to open a window. We did update the floors here, so all the floors are updated in this unit. Um, so these had older floors that weren't salvageable. Um, if you turn to your right, you'll see the uh, upgraded washroom. Very similar finishing as the four bedroom units. Essentially a basic uh, rental grade washroom. That's all it is. Um, so you know, new shower fixtures, new tub here. Um, just an updated basic finishing uh, for the washroom and if you follow me into the kitchen We actually just uh, spruced up the kitchen. We didn't change the tile This is the, actually the original tile in the building added the pot lights um, new appliances um, and uh, and the same sort of cabinet and countertop features is what you see upstairs um, in the four bedroom suite So that's it. That's the one bedroom suite. So there's three of these. There's another bachelor. We won't show you that one uh, but essentially, that's the, that gives you a sense as to how this building is uh, set up. So now I'm curious, how much did you spend on everything? Um, so uh, I, I, there were a couple things that I didn't actually show you through the video. We actually did update the roof entirely. Um, that in itself was, I want to say about $7,000 cost. All to get, and that was one of the surprises. We do get quite often get a few surprises when you're actually doing the renovations. We originally budgeted uh, the renovation to be approximately $100,000 with the additional upgrades that we had to do with the electrical as well as with uh, the roof being uh, leaking, um, our total budget ended up to be $130,000. All right, so let's talk about rents. We have five units. We have, what, three one-bedroom units, one bachelor, and one four-bedroom unit. What rents are we looking at? So um, this is our bread and butter neighborhood. We love this neighborhood. Like we do a lot of rental properties in this area. So we're really familiar with the rents in the area. We are targeting 3,200 all in rents for the main floor. Each one of the one bedroom suites, we're targeting 1,750 uh, plus utility, plus uh, hydro for uh, the, the building is separately metered. So plus hydro for each one of those units. And with the bachelor, we're targeting $1,500 a month. 
uh, for the rent. Okay, so when we compare units, we usually look at cap rates to see how good the cash flows are. So when you factor in, say, rents, minus operating expenses and mortgage, what's that like? Yeah, cap rate's a big number that a, a lot of investors are very interested in hearing. I mean, the, the interesting thing about cap rate on this building is it's, you know, the value of the building is really is not just the cap rate, it's the amount of work that you put into the building. Um, if you look at strictly um, the cap rates, we are bringing, we will hopefully bring in approximately $10,000 a year, uh, sorry, a month in, in <laughs> rents, hopefully not a year. Um, uh, and so that'll bring in approximately $120,000 in rents over the course of the year. The operating expenses, that is taxes, insurance, utilities, um, uh, will be approximately $15,000. So we're netting about $105,000, $100,000 a year approximately. So if you use a cap rate in around sort of, um, you know, or so you, you look at the valuation of the building, we purchased it for 1.6. We spent all together, including holding costs, um, somewhere in the vicinity of $200,000 for the property, land transfer taxes and all those other things. You're looking at a cap rate of approximately 6%. Uh, as what we would call a going in cap rate on, on the property. Okay, so I know you touched on uh, the value of the property and obviously it went up with all the renovations and I know you're all about refinancing. Um, so how much was this property refinanced for? Like how much is it worth right now after renovations? So, so we haven't refinanced the property just yet. Um, and we're just going through the exercise right now, but the preliminary appraisals that are coming in are, are valuing this building at an approximately four and a half cap. They've requested uh, for us to show them the leases prior to the, the full report being generated, but essentially it's gonna be in around 2.3 to $2.4 million. So if you look at that as compared to the purchase price plus renovations, you're looking about a value creation in terms of the value at work being in around Five hundred to six hundred thousand dollars in work over uh, in value created over the course of the last few months. So you put in one hundred and thirty thousand dollars in renovations, plus around seventy thousand dollars in closing costs. That's two hundred thousand dollars, but you boosted the property's value by five hundred thousand dollars. I know it was really hard work for five months, but to me, that's really worth it. Do you have any advice for new investors who want to get started with something like this? I do. I mean, I, I, this is this is my first project. I've been doing this for 10 years now. I've been working on a lot of different renovation projects, small, big, medium, all that kind of stuff. And so what I would say is that it's all about learning and growing and understanding how things work. I think, you know, a lot of times when you come to buying properties, you just need to have the information. And what I've been able to, to do with a lot of my clients and, and myself and my investment is just to grow over time. So I would recommend that you reach out if you have any questions, to ask questions. We are experts in this type of work, we understand it pretty well. And, and so, you know, if there's anything we can help, we can certainly fill in the gaps and hopefully inspire you to do something similar. All right, sounds good. Thanks for showing me around today. Thanks. If you like this video, remember to give us a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more weekly real estate investing videos just like this one. If you need help with real estate investing in Toronto, our team at Elevate is happy to help. I wish you all the best in your real estate investing journey. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.